Will Web3 Esports take over Web2 Esports? Hello and good morning everyone to the first panel of today and the kick of the AIBC here and we're very happy to be amongst these wonder, wonderful intelligent uh, women in tech. And that's what we're going to, to talk about. Not only women, but diversity. It includes wider groups. My name is uh, Lisbeth Oost. I work as a sustainability manager for Aspire Global, which is in the iGaming uh, sector. And they are B2B uh, supplier. And as a sustainability manager, we will set the strategy uh, on the higher level of sustainability. And one of the pillars is diversity as well. It's very important. We see that uh, diversity, yes, OK. Diversity, on the one hand, it creates innovation, and on the other hand, it's a it's, um, sign that a recruitment process is functioning and based on uh, recruiting people without having um, the bias of personal preferences, gender, um, physical disabilities, like all of that. We look at the skills and the, peop the person that's right for the job. And I, I was looking at these groundbreaking studies being done, like how many female actually graduate from STEM studies, and it's like 35% versus 65% um, uh, male, which is obviously something we have to fight about, because if we want to say we want to create a work environment that's 50-50, where how are we going to support more women into STEM fields? Because we can change the, the demographics out there when recruiting. But I would like to ask the panel to quickly introduce themselves one by one and um, maybe tell like a personal experience with diversity for you or, or how you see diversity in tech. Me? Yes. Okay. Welcome everyone, good morning. Thank you very much for spending time with us. My name is Yip. I'm a co-founder at one of the leading blockchain projects for creating what we call the token economy. So we are basically on a mission to solve wealth inequity, the issue of how can we actually create a world in which economic participation is accessible to all and value extracted through value creation is also fairly distributed to all those who contribute. So we are on a mission to, to close the gender equity gap through technology by 2025. And I think having looked at 12 past months of really pushing female participation in the blockchain industry can clearly say that it's still a long way. We are still at about eight to 12% of women participation, but with every day, we can see that the gap is getting smaller. So I'm very happy to be here with other inspirational leaders in, in, in the tech industry to understand and discuss how can we increase diversity and what's it actually um, good for. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Cordelia. I'm the founder of CMC Consulting, which is an HR and recruitment uh, consultancy. Um, I think diversity in tech is definitely a buzzword at the moment, and it's something that I'm working with a lot of my clients on. They want to be able to hire more diverse workforces, so how are we able to do that, and how are we able to kind of bridge that gap between gentlemen and ladies? So yeah, uh, really fascinating, and yeah, really happy to be here today. Thanks. Hi everybody, my name is Shannon Weber and I'm the Strategic Director of Blonde and Giant. Um, our core focus is really to support startups um, to secure investor funding from VCs and I've got a very big focus on women in technology. Um, we're busy helping a fund at the moment that's supporting women in, women in the MENA region because they're very unfunded, very difficult to find um, and I'm very excited to be here. I've worked across uh, South Africa and Europe um, working in Africa, I've worked on a lot of diversity projects, um, most recently gender-based violence, so very excited to be here and hope we can make a change. Uh, morning everyone, my name is Martina Akerland, I'm the CEO of Triggy. Uh, Triggy, we're working with bet engagement products on a, on a global level, working with affiliates, media companies, uh, operators and sport teams. Uh, I'm fairly new to this industry. Uh, I've done two years as a CEO of Triggy. Uh, before this, I did 20 years within banking and finance instead in various senior positions. Uh, I think when I started in, in banking and finance, it was like almost like this industry is, is now. Um, started working on, on diversity and, and I've seen that industry to, to mature and, and uh, being more and more diversified. Uh, one of the key things when, when I decided to 
switch industry was that uh, I want to make an impact and a change here as well. I think this is an amazing industry with uh, amazing people, uh, so many entrepreneurs that are self-made. Uh, so, and I've seen only in these two years, I've seen a big change. Uh, I'm part of the All in Diversity uh, project uh, that organizes uh, CEO network for, for female CEOs. And, and when I started two years ago, I think we were like 15. Uh, like six months ago when we had our last one, we were 30. Uh, so that's, of course, that's, that's a great increase uh, in, from a percentage uh, and, and number perspective. So I'm seeing that this industry is really uh, adjusting quickly. So I'm thinking that, that we'll see, we're seeing, seeing change coming. Thank you, everyone. And I think something interesting to discuss is like when you look at the, the hierarchy of a company, the, the pyramid structure, when we see the lower levels, that's often 50-50. But when then you grow up in the, um, in the organization, the um, diversity gets less. And uh, Martina, maybe you can tell from your experience, especially in the finance world, very male dominant. Um, how do you think going forward companies can support this or, or what has been done to create more diversity on, on management level, but also on boards, which is, which is powerful and important. Yes, I think there are like and uh, there, there are so many areas that, that you need to cover but of course it, it has to start from the top to actually uh, want to make a change uh, and you have to uh, you have to um, how do you say uh, look in, into your own organization how you're working with promotions and how can we make sure to, to promote um, women and always have like an equal uh, promotion process uh, maybe you have to put extra effort into leadership into to women to make sure that they are able to succeed because that was one of the reasons that, that I left one of the largest banks in Sweden it was just like there were too many men in line for the next available uh, sea level and I felt like I, I will never get there in, in the time that I wanted uh, but so it has to, it has to start from the top uh, but also you have to uh, how do you say uh, um, really um, not put pressure but um um, work with the recruitment process. If you're working uh, like uh, with your own HR team that are doing the recruitment process, or if you're working with external recruitment companies, of course everyone is like really busy and working by the hour. Uh, so finding ten candidates with maybe eight males, that is of course that's normally a quicker uh, job. Uh, but but if if you're the the responsible recruiting manager, you really have to make sure that uh, okay. Uh, I want an, an equal recruitment process here um, not only the candidates but how you how you uh, decide to, to write the work description like you can work, use with different kind of wordings that will attract both men and females uh, in the recruitment process when, when we at Trigi are recruiting if there's a female I'm always in that process from the beginning um, to be able to show that even though we're male dominated that um, uh, we are part of a change um, uh, and then you also have to work with the culture to make sure that once two women are uh, on board that they really um, flourish and, and like uh, the culture of the company so uh, many things that you have to think of culture is, is key here I think when you're recruiting and I wanted to ask Cordelia like you ask questions maybe in the interview process to see if this person has a diversity and sustainability mindset because then automatically it will be a good fit for the company and it thinks along uh, the lines of contributing to that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it goes, as Martina mentioned, even further back to kind of the job uh, description and the job writing process. You know, the language that you're using to engage with candidates may then attract either more of a male application or a female application. And it's really important to kind of keep that more level. I think, you know, flexibility is also key in what you can offer. You know, if you're wanting to be able to attract more ladies, it's important to be able to offer more flexible working hours if they need to potentially pick up children, go on school runs. I think now the mix of hybrid and us moving into this new world has made things much more equal. We're more on a level footing now for, to be able to attract ladies into the workplace. But yeah, absolutely, I think it goes really back to even the, the job creation. Yeah, I think and in Malta they extended parental leave uh, now as well as a new incentive and it can also be transferred to the, to the partner 
which is great. This is really supporting uh, women because obviously we want to share the burden of if once you have kids equally, but it doesn't always work like that because the woman is still the one that gives birth and needs to be physically off work. Um, but having these incentives in place from an employer is really, really helpful. And um, I think also maybe COVID has helped there with the working from home. And uh, Shannon, you have a lot of experience all over the world. You, you have lived and maybe you can give some interesting perspective on the different cultures and, and what you have uh, experienced. Also, just on your point on COVID, I think that women in technology took a big hit Although we think that working from home is better, <clears throat> they've been working longer hours, yeah. their partners are not taking on the responsibilities, you know, we're more dedicated to working <clears throat> longer hours. So I think that we took a very big knock. Um, in terms of a uh, global stats of women in technology, it's still very low. It's about 20% of the entire workforce. And again, back to what Martina said, you know, it's pay disparity, it's definitely a bro culture that you're facing, so there's no mentorship, you feel very isolated. So even the, the policies that they put in place, we don't believe in them, right? So I think those are the kind of things that you need to look at. And if I'm looking at uh, ethnic, eth ethnicity across the board, it's not just women and gender, it's, it's people of color within the tech industry, there's almost no African representation, women even less so. Um, Asia, I think, is much bigger in the US um, and India, but it's still very, very limited at this point. And do you have any ideas or thoughts about how we can uh, push and support this better? So I think... Believing. <laughs> believing better in that, you know, it's not just policy, it's really something they can use and, and be the next CEO. So I think it's important to have female CEOs and female leadership because those businesses are actually more profitable. So I think companies really have to look, is the policy just written in words or are they actually enacting it within their culture? You know, are there support groups for women? Can they have access to mentorship? You know, do they understand that some of us have like the school runs? Can they be a lot more flexible with that? Um, where is that support coming from? And generally the men are not supporting it. You know, it's all word of mouth, but they're not actually actively supporting us within those businesses. So that needs to change. I mean, I was looking at stats, I think Zoom does it really, really well. And they're looking at companies like Uber and PayPal that are lowest ranking on diversity and inclusion. And these are big companies. So my question is, what are the men at the top doing to kind of empower us to take those leadership positions? Yes, and maybe Tip, you can give a perspective, like how is, is blockchain, maybe since it's a younger industry, is it more equal or is that bro culture there as well? Like, uh, how do you see that? Well. I come from strategy consulting, so when I looked at different ecosystems, I look at it from a very strategic perspective. I was looking at the largest companies by market capitalization nowadays. You look at these lists, maybe 50% out of the top 10 are tech companies, right? The Amazons, the Googles, the Metas, the Teslas, whatever of the world, all like American-based tech companies, many of them. So I was like, okay, what will be the tech companies on this top 10 list um, in 10 years? And I was already looking at the list and I saw Bitcoin and Ethereum on it. I was like, wow, okay, if we right now live in a world where Web2 companies are the most valuable companies in 10 years from now, probably top Web3 companies like the evolution of Web2 companies will be the leading companies. So I looked into seeing, wow, what is the female participation there? And I realized, wow, 5%. So I entered in a leading position and then I basically created a lot of networks to see because in the end we need capital, like put your money where your mouth is, but your money means like money that ideally comes from those who care about it and those who care about it most often is those who are affected by it, right? So what's the fastest way to catalyze um, women participation in wealth creation, in, in wealth extraction? And I saw that just growth rates in the blockchain industry are just like five times faster than in a regular um, industry where I worked. I worked in finance and banking, insurance. And it's just like, it takes 20 years to go to C-level position. In blockchain, it takes two years. So it's a 10x kind of um, leverage. So I was like, okay, if we can go there, create the network. So what we did was I gave not me only, but a collective of a lot of women gave scholarships for other women to attend conferences so that they can participate in business development, in networking, in growing with the industry at top level. Then we created speaker opportunities for women. So we created a lot of conferences, made sure that 50% of the speakers are women at least. 
Then two weeks ago, we created the first hackathon only for women. And a lot of women had not been um, in the tech space before, but they saw that there's a place, a network, and a very big growth opportunity for them. So they were like, wow, we want to be part of that. We want to shape that industry of the future. And we are still small, but we've been, like, we have done these only in the past 12 months. But we've, I think, deployed more than almost half a million of scholarship funds to all the women across the globe. And hopefully they become investable very soon, meaning they create um, their investment, investable companies. And in Web3, you can see that exit and liquidity is like two to three years compared to seven to ten years in the traditional VC world. So if we can get people to um, exit within two, three years and then redistribute all the funds they made and create that um, women-led ecosystem flywheel, then I think we have good reason to believe that by 2030 it's not about gender equality, but it's more about zero inclusive, so bringing in different perspectives beyond gender. But first, let's maybe solve the gender gap, I think. It's very good. Is someone you want to respond to? Yes, I just, I just want to comment. Like, I, I think it's also it's, it's important for, for uh, us as women to, to look at this like from, from uh, we are actually making the change, saying that, that others need to empower us. I think that's the wrong way of seeing it. We have to empower ourselves. Uh, and, and you as a woman, you, you have to put yourself in a position when you're able to do that. If, if maybe you shouldn't choose a partner who's not equal to you then go like you're putting yourself in a position where you want to be and that you're responsible of that yourself and of course that's that's something you can say it's something that you can do yourself and of course amazing women are doing this but I think the best way of empowering yourself is also try to surround yourself with people that are empowering you and like what what you're mentioning now I'm thinking like the networks the mentors the friends you have uh, the managers uh, the board that you're working with, like, make sure to so surround yourself with amazing people uh, so, so you empower yourself because we're not here to, for others to, to like, make us um, uh, be powerful. We, we have to, like, be charge of that ourselves. Uh, and the best way of doing that is to, to have great people around you. Um, asking for a seat at your table. We actually can create our own tables. And it's time that we started doing that. We're not looking for handouts. And I think we need to lead by example, but definitely the mentorship um, and support, women supporting each other yeah. within these firms, because also that's another but, separate but also, topic. also men, like some of my biggest supporters, they're men. Uh, so it's like there are amazing men out there that are only looking for talent. Uh, and I think that the best and most successful companies right now, they're working with, with uh, diversity. So, so if, if you have the right competence, I think there's a fast track right now if you're a woman, because everyone is looking for diversity in the recruitment process if you're, if you're a forward-thinking company. So um, the possibilities are there for sure. Positive role model uh, piece is something that's really important by having that mentorship and by having people that you can look up to at work and see, you know, within three years, five years, that can be your trajectory. I think that's something that women really value. And by being able to kind of empower each other, we can then help to kind of bring everybody else up. Yes, so just summarizing, I think. It's partly initiatives that will, will help, but it's also be confident and, and grab the opportunities there. And, and we, we know the stories like when you apply for a job, meals are uh, putting their CV in a way, I'm very confident, like, yeah, I, I think I can do it, I'm, I'm doing it. And then when it's a woman, they, they feel like, I'm not good at this. So I think the whole confidence, and here we have very confident uh, women, we, <laughs> we are good examples, but we can help and, and get that more down to, to everyone, because in a way it has been uh, a, a mindset for a long time that needs to change, and it is changing, and I think the, the girls and the ladies that grow up these days, they are completely different, it's a very equal uh, education, so I'm looking forward to, to see the next decade with everything here and um, I don't know if somebody wants to, to add something uh, to this as a closing note because we have a few seconds left. Cordelia, Shannon, yes, you good? Just want to say thank you to the organizers also who create that space for to, to, to hear different perspectives 
from different leaders. So thank you, Stella. Thank you, Sigma. See you next time.